Today, I'm gonna to give you guys a no BS method to get the challenger. It's a three step method. And after I release this, a lot of top players are not gonna like it because it's pretty much what they do. It's what I did to get the challenger. And as long as you're willing to put the time into it, you probably will get it. So the first thing you need to understand about challenger is that there are only so many spots per region. So North America has 250, Europe West has 200, Korea has 300, Oceania has 50. All regions have their own specified set number, which means you need to be in that top rank. So if you're going to use the method that I'm about to tell you, uh, you'll probably get to challenger. Maybe if you're GM already, you'll get there in like a week. If you're masters, maybe it'll take you two weeks, maybe a month, and then just add like a little more time based on what your current rank is. But after a lot of people watch this, it'll get a lot trickier and we'll have to go into the next iteration. So I actually learned this from my old chess teacher. So in chess, you could play exactly like how the best players do based on memorizing openings. So you could essentially play like Magnus Carlsen or Garry Kasparov up to move like 10, sometimes 20, depending on how deeply you memorize each opening. What if I told you that there was a way to do this in TFT? Before we get into the exact method, and I'll show you exactly how I do it, let's get in a quick word from our sponsor. Did you know that there are 5 billion people with access to the internet? Those people could all be playing Raid Shadow Legends. The best part about this game has got to be the graphics. Normally, good graphics on a mobile game are hard to come by. I believe I have five of these right now. So next one up we have is Masamoto. So let's look at this guy's stats for a second. He's got like 4,000 HP, 200 some attack, 400 defense. So he seems pretty beefy compared to the other people. So if you need that, that's definitely going to be good for your team. I think I actually do need that because I have like one good champion that does a lot of damage. So getting the tank is probably, probably pretty good. Holy cow. Elva Autumnborn. All right, so we finally got a legendary after opening all those up. That's really nice, really nice. Look at this. I was saying that the last guy was really tanky at 4,000 HP. This guy's got 7,785 right there. And then last one we have is the, the Daywalker. Right now, there's a special champion elect event where you can vote on your favorite starter champion. All you have to do is download Raid Shadow Legends from one of the links below, copy your in-game player ID, and then go to championselect.plarium.com, enter all the relevant details, and then vote on whoever your favorite champion is. You can win a bunch of awesome in-game and real-life prizes, including champions, in-game items, and even Amazon gift cards worth up to $1,000. The vote does end on February 10th, and then the prize winners will be selected. So don't worry if you are an existing raid player or a new one trying to get started. They've released a brand new legendary champion based off of MMA and pro wrestling legend Ronda Rousey. I can't wait to unlock another legendary champion, which is really easy to do because all you have to do is log in and play raid for 7 days between now and February 20th. You can also use the special promo code Raid Ronda, which is available for both new and old users to get a bunch of helpful stuff. Check all the available promo codes in the description. If you're one of the new players coming into Raid, check out my link in the description or scan my QR code on the screen here to get unique bonuses worth $30. We're talking a free epic champion Chanaru, 200,000 silver, 1 XP boost, 1 energy refill, and 1 epic skill tome. All this treasure will be waiting for you right here. All of this will be available for the next 30 days for new players only. Just like everything else in life, the early birds do get the special, and there are only 80 million downloads of Raid Shadow Legends. So we got around like four plus billion downloads ago before everyone who has access to the internet actually downloads Raid Shadow Legends. So check out the link or the QR code, and I hope to see you guys in game. So everyone knows that watching good players play will make you a better player, but that's not the most effective way as we'll learn in just a second. As we said before, there are only so many spots in Challenger. So you need to be doing more than what everyone else already knows. So let's take VOD reviewing to the next level. Whenever you watch a stream, you're watching it in real time. So however long the game takes, that's how much time you need to devote to learn whatever there is to learn in that VOD. So that's not the most efficient way to do things because there's only so many hours within the day. So here's the best method. So go to any stat tracking website. We're using Lulchess this time and then click on leaderboards. Go to whichever region you're in because it's very important to copy the best players in your region. That isn't to say that there isn't anything to learn in other regions, but what works where you are is going to be a little more effective. So right now I'm seeing the top players, Dish Soap, Sox, Amde, Rec, Robin Songs. I'm going to pick one of these players. This time I'm just going to pick the rank one Dish Soap. And then you go to their Twitch channel. Obvious already, but we're going to take it a step further. Once you're on his stream, look for his most recent VOD, click on it, 
copy the link, and then go ahead and download it. There are many programs to download these videos. The one I use is called 4K Video Downloader, but literally any way to download the VOD, you could just Google it and you just paste the link there and then eventually it'll download it. So I already have one downloaded, so I'm just gonna open that instead of waiting to download the new one. So you just right click and I like using VLC Media Player. The reason why is because there are a lot of options to fast forward and unfast forward really easily. So you go to preferences and then you click on hotkeys and then there are a lot of different ways to scrub back and forth. Shift left, shift right is like very short. You could do bigger ones with alt, medium ones with control, and then like long jumps with control, alt, left, and right. So essentially, you can just skip through the VODs very, very easily. So first thing you need to do when you get into a game is look at the starting carousel. Let's see what they do. Right as the timer goes to zero, what you want to do is pause it. So right here, pause, and see who is going for what items. This tells you what challenger players, because I'm assuming he's in a game with other challengers, like to start in their starting carousel. So you, you mark it down one time, you mark it down another time, eventually you'll know what the most popular ones are. So in this one, we see three people going for chain, we see one person going for sword, one person going for negatron, two for bow, and one for, I think it is a rod. So obviously, chain and bow are going to be the most popular, at least according to this game. After that, you unpause, fast forward a bit, you okay. see what items left Whatever. over, and then you're like, okay, people do not like tears. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Now, you, again, you may be wondering, why do you need to download it over the Twitch VOD? Well, Twitch VODs, the scrubbing is not as good. It's not as free to move back and forth. But right as the turn starts, you already see that he's scouting around a lot. That's maybe something you should be doing as well. Um, I also like to mute most of these VODs. You could listen to them if you want, but some players, it depends who it is. Some explain a lot, some like don't really explain that much. But overall, I like muting just to keep it consistent. But sometimes if you're confused on something, maybe you can unmute and see what they say about it, if they say anything. So. I already made a mistake here in the analysis. What you're supposed to do is pause right here and figure out the turn yourself first. Choose which units to buy, which units to put on the board, and which units to put on the bench or sell. So here, I'd probably buy the Lulu pair, put them in, and then take out the Wukong. But he actually does something different. He doesn't care about Lulu at all. He just plays the two defenders and buys Kale on the bench. That's one thing that you need to take a note of. After you do this, a lot of times over like, let's say you do this five games a day, you'll be able to play the early game exactly like how Dish Soap would play it, or other top players depending on who you're watching. We see that he drops a Jax, and right there he buys a pair and then buys a Renekton. So you could see already another knowledge is gained. On this specific patch, he does not value Jax that much. So we see the glove, and now in the next turn you do the exact same thing. Right as you see the shop, pause so you don't know what he does, and then we try to guess again what units does he put in, what units does he sell? Which units does he put on his bench? So here, you could probably put just any unit in. He seems to like the Kale probably for underground, so maybe just play Kale with the Poppy and the Wukong. After that, what do you want to buy? You have two gold here, and you're probably getting gold from the minion rounds, so you're probably just going to buy everything in the shop. But let's say that the gold drops are important three-cost units that you want to keep. You only have two gold to spend. Which units do you actually buy? Uh, maybe you want the Talon and the Gangplank. Maybe you want the Double Lux. You have to decide that and see what he actually ends up doing. So we're going to skip ahead a little bit to see when the minion rounds actually end and see what he does. So we see he gets a drop of Velkaz, and then he buys a Talon, Silas, Lux, and the GP. So again, we learned another thing. Jax and Velkaz are not prioritized in the early game. You may have already known that, but again, once you do this over like five games in one day, let's say that'll take you maybe like two hours. You pretty much learn all the different units the top players like and dislike. You could also do this with the rank two player, rank three player, maybe the rank one in Korea, maybe the rank one in Europe. And you pretty much just rinse and repeat because TFT, there are many ways to play it. Sometimes the top two players disagree a lot on what's the best play each turn. And over time, you develop how they incorporate into your own style. Again, same thing here. You could look at the augments and then you're like, oh, which one would I choose? And you could also do data checking on these to see what choices they pick, depending on what the data is. But again, write down your choice in your head or on a sheet of paper, it doesn't really matter. Say like, oh, I would take March of Progress here and then play this such and such unit. Uh, or like, maybe I take Earth Grab Bag and then I also build these items. You have to do the entire turn and just pause. You can take two seconds, you could take two minutes, you could take 20 minutes thinking about this turn because it's that important. In a TFT turn, you only get, I think, 50 seconds on stage 2-1. And sometimes a lot of that time is used on just thinking. But 
when you're doing VOD review, you want to find the perfect answer. So if you want to take 20 minutes, that is going to help you out a ton once you're actually in real games. But let's see what he ends up picking here. Again, you could skip ahead and move behind. So he takes March of Progress, and then he also sees he has a bunch of Luxes. Again, pause after you see that because there's a new decision making point where the shop is revealed. And then you're like, oh, do you level up? Obviously, with March of Progress, you can't. But if you took a different one, you're like, oh, do I level up? Do I buy these things in my shop? What units do I place on the board? Which squares do I place them on? Do I put Poppy on the outside or inside? Do I put Kale on the left or the right, further away from them or closer to them? Maybe you're playing some other different combinations of units. Maybe you put Kale on the second row. Figure out every little detail that these players are doing, and over time, you'll incorporate it yourself into your own gameplay. Do you slam the guard breaker? Do you slam the sunfire cape? And then you're like, oh, how come when he got chain, glove, and belt start, one game he built Sunfire Cape, a different game he built Guardbreaker? What is the difference between his current board that made him make that decision? Is it his augment? Is it the champions that he has two starred? All these things contributes to all this decision making that players go through. And again, once you do this, you don't even have to do it that often. Maybe like one game a day for most people is enough. But if you really want to get to the highest ranks as quickly as possible, do like one VOD review first and then play two games and then do another VOD review and then play two more games. Whatever combination you're feeling depending on that day. Also notice, uh, you'll see how other players actually play. You notice he scouts a lot. He scouted twice already and those were like in the neutral rounds and one is just during stage 2-1. And this is a time where you could turn on the unmute button uh, just to see what he's going through. Maybe he's like saying like, oh, this guy's got this augment. They're probably going to go this. And then you learn that too. You're like, oh, next time you see one of your opponents with those augments, they're probably going to do X, Y, Z based on what the player says. Again, some players talk a lot. Some players don't really talk that much at all. You just kind of have to figure it out sometimes yourself. You know, as much as this is a great way of like accelerating your skill in TFT, sometimes you still have to use your own brain a little bit. And that brings me to my very next important point which is to develop your own play style. But of course, do this for the entire game. Like again, skip ahead in stages if like, you don't need to watch the fights and stuff, but like, oh, maybe he wants to roll on 3-2, maybe he wants to roll on 4-1, things of that nature. But let's get back into the whole play style thing because I'm not gonna do a whole VOD review with you guys because you already know how to do it now. But you'd essentially do that whole pausing thing whenever there's a decision-making point. So at first you're gonna be copying everyone else and then eventually you're gonna realize that some of the things they do you don't do so well. And some of the things they don't do, you do do well. And that's when you start incorporating your own play style. Because if you just purely copy someone, you'll never surpass them. You have to mix their gameplay with other people's gameplay, and then also mix it with your own gameplay. Because if you don't apply it to what you do, then nothing's gonna happen from it, right? But of course, like again, there are going to be times where the comps they're going for it it's just not your thing. It's like when you're playing, let's say, League of Legends or something like that, and you're a jungle player. Why are you watching a bot laner when you could watch a jungle player? Maybe you're a very aggressive player. You should watch like an aggressive jungler versus a passive jungler. That's not to say whatever the mid laner stream says is right or wrong. It just means that it's going to be a little different than what you're used to. So, of course, try to find someone that matches your play style or maybe try to find a way to just see what they do and incorporate it in your playstyle. one or the other is going to work. But let's take this one step further because I just told you guys how to get to challenger, but how do you get to like rank 10 or even like top five? Well, what all the top players are doing if you're outside of China, they do the exact same thing that we just did, but they review China VODs. The difference between us and them and why I'm telling you not to review China VODs directly is because it's better to base things on your own region because they already did a lot of the legwork for you. By learning what they absorb from the Chinese VODs, they're able to incorporate it for NA playstyle or their own playstyle. That's why, again, I highly suggest watching players in your own region, not someone in a different one. So if you're in Europe, I would not watch NA streamers. I would watch European streamers. If you're in Korea, I would not watch NA. I would watch Korea. But the top players in each region, they all learn from China because China is by far the best region. They have the most players. They have the most best players. They, it's just a combination of everything good. But the reason why I mentioned the Chinese VODs is because once I post this video, the people that actually put in the work there might be, let's say, 500 of them. Out of like the thousands of people who will watch this video, maybe like 500 of you guys will actually do what I say in this video. And some of you will get challenger, maybe half of you will. Because again, there are limited spots in the space. But once people saturate this strategy, 
uh, they, they need to take it to the next level, and that'll be to study the Chinese VODs directly, maybe. There is a chance that other regions rise up as well. Uh, and there's a lot of other data checking you can do, such as looking at random players who spike up really quickly. And this is essentially what the top 10 players are doing. They're actually looking at a lot of players that are below them just to see what they're doing differently because there are so many players that are worse than them. So it might seem a little counterintuitive what I just said, but essentially since there's so many like random challenger, random GM players, uh, there's a lot of discovery that can happen with those people. Like one person, one top 10 player doesn't have time to discover every single composition, but they could look at something and then improve upon it. And I'll show you how to do that right now. So in your League of Legends client, click on your profile right here, click on ranked, and then head on over into this like challenger section. If you're not challenger, you click this little t uh, icon up here and then you scroll down and then you click on top TFT players. So you may notice already something is d weird, right? So, wow, this person climbed 118 ranks. This little thing shows like how people's rank change within the past day. He is doing something differently than everyone else. So what you wanna do is look this guy up and see what he's doing. So go back to any stat tracking site, click on the guy. In this case, it was DGraph. And then you'll see that he went from like 1000 LP all the way up to like 1429. That is striking. So look at his recently played champions. You take a look at like what units he's building, what comps he's playing. And then you're like, oh, he's playing a bunch of Ezreal. Maybe I should try looking into that. So that's what, again, like some of these top players do. They see what other people are using to rise really quickly. Obviously, that was a very explicit example. And I'm not doing that deep of a dive in it. It probably isn't the Ezreal. It's probably a combination of a lot of different things. But they look into this and see exactly what he's playing. And then since these top 10 players have the fundamental skills in TFT, they're able to just improve upon it really quickly. But it doesn't have to be someone up here. This is very rare that someone just goes from like top 150 to top five. That, that's very, very rare. But you scroll down a bit and then like you see like top 36, this guy or top 34 plus 176 ranks. Look all these guys up and see what they are doing differently. For some of you guys, this is not going to be an overnight process. So it, it really depends on your starting point. Again, if you're GM, if you do what I'm telling you to do, you'll get to challenger in like a week tops. Uh, if you are masters, maybe two weeks, two and a half weeks, three weeks. If you're diamond, it might take you like a month, maybe two months. It might take you a full set of doing this. It's really hard to get an exact time frame for everyone, but I know a lot of players, they did this. Like one person, he watched my videos before and now he's like one of the top 10 players on the server, which is, I find really cool. But again, he just improved really quickly and that's how he got there. And I know right now there are probably gonna be a lot of doubters for this strategy. They're like, oh, do the top players actually do this? And you may notice already some streamers when they talk, they're like, oh yeah, earlier today I saw XYZ player doing this, this, and that. And it essentially means they're playing TFT or watching TFT pretty much 24 seven. And again, to get to top 100 or top 250, depending on your region, it's gonna have to take that amount of work sometimes because there are a lot of people who do this for a living, like myself included, like I don't have a day job, you know? Like I have time to do all this nonsense, but like other people, they don't. But a lot of people who are aspiring to be streamers, a lot of people who just are like retired or something, or people who live off their parents or something like that and don't need to really work, they have time to play TFT all day. Like those are the types of people who are going to be pushing these upper ranks. It's very rare that someone has like a full-time job where they have to go into the office. Like a lot of the top TFT players, they're like software engineers, they like work from home and they're not actually doing anything. So they're just playing TFT all day. Uh, but like that, that's who your competition is. You just have to realize that and see if it's worth devoting this amount of time to. And I know a lot of people who watch this, they'll just watch it and they'll just be like, oh, that's cool. And then they won't do it, which is fine. Like everyone can do their own thing. You know, it's not required to be a certain rank in TFT. I'll actually make a video after this saying whether it's worth it to get to challenger or not. And it's gonna depend on the person, but do subscribe below if you are interested in that type of video. But just to summarize the three steps, it's first doing the VOD reviews, but doing the correct VOD reviews, because the way people normally do it by watching streams is they go through one game every 45 minutes. The my method you go through, you could do a game in like 15 minutes, but sometimes you take really long on a turn. So uh, the first time you do it, I highly recommend like 
taking it really slow, like each turn, maybe take like a full two minutes on each turn or maybe like a full five minutes on each decision making point to really make sure you are actually doing the exact thing the top streamers doing. You could kind of like treat it like a test or something like that. Like if I don't get each round correct in the first two rounds, like, I don't know, you get a bad mark or something. And then over time, you'll start getting perfect at it. And then you'll be able to incorporate that in your own play. Uh, next thing, step two is adapt whatever you learn into your own play style eventually. Because again, some things work for other people. Some things don't work for you. Some people, they pour their cereal in before their milk. Some people, they pour the milk first before the cereal. You need to incorporate it into your own style because both methods work for eating cereal and milk, but everyone has their own preferences on how they consume it. The last and third thing you need to do is just grind it out. So again, I think a GM player, they could do this within a week if they do maybe like, uh, let's say devote six hours a day, three hours playing, three hours VOD reviewing, and then kind of like mixing them in between. Don't do straight VOD reviews or straight playing the whole time. Maybe like you have work or something. So before you go to work, like do one VOD review and then maybe at lunch, maybe you have time to sneak another VOD review, you get back from work do the third VOD review and then play two games, do one VOD review, play like two more games and like go to bed or whatever. Uh, I don't know what your schedule is. I'll be honest, guys. But like whatever your schedule is, just try to like find random times where you can do it. Like for example, sometimes when I'm too tired to actually play and I'm just like trying to wake up in bed or something like that, I have my laptop next to my bed. So I just take my laptop and then I do some VOD reviews. I do one or two, but while I like try to mentally wake up and then once I'm awake, brush my teeth, eat breakfast or whatever, and then go and play one or two games, do another VOD review, play more games, or like turn on my stream or something like that. And then, yeah, you just have to find time to do it. That's really all there is. The great secret about the method I just told you is that you could apply this to get good at any skill in life, as long as you are able to see what the top people are doing. So you might be wondering like, how do I see what the top players are doing in whatever field it is, whatever game it is? It could be like something like programming or something like that too. But like, there's always a way to figure out what other people are doing. I'll give an example in chess because my chess teacher taught me this and he's not doing so well like health wise so i want to try to spread some of the knowledge that he gave me so in chess there's this thing called the chess informant and it pretty much before all these chess databases existed and stuff like that it recorded all the, or it had all the recorded games from all like the major tournaments and people would buy these kind of like a subscription or something like that if you could afford it I think what he, him and his friend would do was they would share like one person would buy it this month, one person would buy it the next month or however often it came out. I don't even know. But essentially this book just had all the games from like the important tournaments and they would just study them and then they would see how this corresponds to what they're playing. And it's essentially like what the meta is. That's what those books kind of defined. And you would just copy some players, learn their opening, see what they like to do and see if they did various different lines together. And this exists in almost every field. You just have to go out there and find it. So hopefully if this video doesn't help you get really good, and I'm talking like top percentile good in TFT, maybe it helps you in like whatever area you are trying to get better at in life. Because some people, they don't have time to devote like 10 hours a day. The, the top streamers, they devote like 18 hours a day to playing TFT. But again, this doesn't have to apply to TFT. This could apply to whatever you're passionate about or whatever you want to get good at. So maybe you want to like make a lot of money. Like some people like doing investments and stuff. Like there are hedge fund managers that just write blogs and pretty much tell you what they're doing and you could just read them and learn from them. Obviously, like don't copy everything exactly how they say because you need to incorporate it into your own portfolio because they have billions of dollars. You probably don't have billions of dollars and yeah, just like find a way to fit it into your style and eventually you'll become almost as good as them. But yeah, I do wonder what the next iteration will be. I think it's just like studying Chinese VODs, but once everyone's doing that, like it'll be just much more competitive. Like after this, like getting to Challenger is going to be harder. And I'm sorry for that because a lot more people will be doing it. And it's not the fact that people are trying to get to Challenger that makes it hard. It's the fact that more people will be trying effectively to do it. And this is like one of the most effective methods that I know of. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Be sure to like and subscribe and I will definitely see you guys in the future.